everybody. Thanks for hosting me today. Uh, I'm going to give a short presentation about hardware security and uh, specifically about uh, hardware wallet security. About me, as you can hear, uh, I'm French. Um, I'm Charles Guillaume. I'm CSO at Ledger. I'm in charge of the security of uh, Ledger's product. Uh, formerly, I was technical manager in uh, an ITSF. Uh, basically, it's a secu security evaluation lab. Um, I was in charge of attacking devices, and that worked. Uh, well, agenda. Uh, after briefly introducing the Ledger's products, I'm going to talk about state-of-the-art state attacks. First, software attacks. Second, perturbation attacks. Third, my favorite, side channel attacks. And finally, physical attacks. For each of those attacks, uh, I'm going to try to give some e examples of how they apply on a single, simple example, a pin verification. Today at Ledger, we design and manufacture hardware-based security solution for cryptocurrency and blockchain application. Um, our star product is the Ledger Nano S. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, you, you know what, what it looks like. Maybe I want my pocket, no, okay. Uh, uh, our architecture is based on a secure element. It looks like, like this. Uh, secure element is a specific form factor of smart cards. It's, uh, they are used in uh, various applications where security is, uh, is involved, such as passports and banking cards, and now uh, also other wallets. Um, of course, we have a, a PIN uh, verification to, to um, log in the, the wallet. And our threat model is um, we, we can run our device in a, an untrusted environment. In, in uh, Europe and in France, specifically in France, industries are developed the smart card technology, and this is a key technology for securing systems. Securing systems is a hard task, and secure so securing software is even harder. Um, that's why most industries have chosen other based solution to secure the, their systems. And the idea is to put all the security of the system in a single point, the smart card. Today, we can take advantage of 35 years of smart card legacy. This is a well-organized security industry with big actors, IC vendors like Samsung, ST, and others, embedded software developers like Gemalto. And this industry has organized uh, an evaluation and certification process. This process is well-defined. The most popular certification scheme is common criteria. Uh, common criteria defines a scale of security. EAL 5 plus is the highest level of security regard regarding attacks. In this context, the attacker has a, has a physical access to the device, and then the secure element has to resist to this kind of attacks. I'm often asked what, what's the difference uh, between a secure element and um, general purpose hardware. Um, what is, what is the difference? The difference is a secure element is certified. That means that there has been a security evaluation and the secure element has to resist to this kind of attacks. Um, before, uh, Ari talked about the uh, SGX. Uh, SGX is not secure, is not um, certified. And, and this year, there are maybe three or four papers uh, explaining how to break it like uh, cache attacks, uh, maybe it's uh, uh, also SGX uh, Spectre, and also, probably it also, um, <coughs> uh, it, it also, it can also be bro broken using raw armor and, and so on. So secure elements are really different 
they have to resist to those kind of attacks, which I'm, I'm going to explain. First kind of attacks are software attacks. Okay, we design hardware in order to avoid software attacks, but even hardware design of interfaces, I.O., so when they are I.O., <coughs> there are potential software attack vectors, like buffer overflow, uh, null pointer dereferencing, and so on. Also, in some cases, uh, smart cars are open platforms. That means that the customers can load its own application. So in this context, the, the, pl the platform must uh, provide isolation between the apps, meaning uh, an app A uh, must not be able to, to access to, to the private data of an app B. Um, in the smart card industry, it's often Java Card OS, which is um, implemented, but we can also use native OS. Our OS is called Bolos, and it um, takes advantage of its na native platform, and it takes advantage of the, the hardware in order to provide this isolation. Um, a simple example of um, a software attacks on the pin verification. Uh, as I say, we might think that pin verification is too simple and there is no, no attacks, no software attacks, but you, you should have a look on YouTube. There are hundreds of videos uh, explaining how to bypass the, the pin verification on the iPhone. The idea is to uh, overflow the system in order to make the pin verification app crash and then to, to log in. About pin verification is, is a simple implementation of a pin verification. The first function uh, is very simple. It just um, updates the pin try counter. The pin try counter is the number of tries the, the user can um, try the, the pin. Um, if it's zero, it cannot uh, um, authenticate anymore. Otherwise, it updates uh, depending on the, the, the pin presented by the user. And the second function is the pin verification itself. It scans the digits pre presented by the user, and the first digit, um, which does not equal to the correct one, the function returns false, otherwise it return returns true. It's, it's a correct uh, implementation, functionally speaking, but it's a bad way to implement it. I will explain just after, just after why. Second, perturbation attacks. Perturbation, the, the idea of this kind of attacks is to perturb the normal behavior of the circuit during the execution of the algorithm. This can be done by different means. Uh, the attacker can induce glitches on the, the clock or on the power supply. Th this will induce fault. It can also use EMI, electromagnetic injection, or more efficiently, it, it can use laser. Laser is very efficient. When a laser is shot on the backside of, the circ of a circuit, it produces an induced current, which allows to switch the bits inside the circuit. So when this kind of attack is applied, it allows an attacker to um, perturb the normal uh, flow of, of the code execution. This can be interesting or more interesting Thingly, it, it can also be applied on a cryptography algorithm. A famous attack is on RSA implementation, on the CRT execution. A single fault on one of the two exponentiation allow the, the attacker to, to factorize the modulus only computing a GCD. Only one fault and the, the, all the system is, is down. This kind of attacks exist on almost all crypto algorithm like DES, AES, and also on the uh, ECDSA. And this kind of attack is very efficient, and if you don't use secure hardware, it's almost impossible to prevent the, this kind of attacks. Back to our pin verification, uh, it's very easy to understand that uh, a single fault on the first if of, or on the second if allows to break the system. On the first if, it's, it's uh, it's very easy. If the attacker is, is able to skip the, the comparison, it will be authenticated without presenting any pin. And the second if is quite funny. Um, when the attacker skips this, this comparison, 
the pin trail counter will be updated to minus one, and then it will be able to, to try as much uh, pin as you want because minus one, minus two, minus three, is, it's never zero, so it, 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 it can break the system. So that's why the, it's a bad way to implement uh, the pin verification. Third kind of attack, side channel attacks. Those are my favorites. Um, but here I'm only talking about side channel attacks on hardware because uh, Spectre and Meltdown are also side channel attacks, but it, it, they are quite different. The idea of side channel, the side channel attacks are very efficient because uh, it does not require, uh, it's very cheap because it only requires an oscilloscope. And second, it can, they cannot be detected by the hardware because this, this is only an observation. The idea is to measure the power consumption of the circuit during its execution. I say power consumption, but that can be any physical measurement like uh, electromagnetic eman emanation, noise, and, but power, power consumption is quite efficient. And then to, if there is a correlation between the data processed by the circuit and its power consumption, the, the attacker will be able to uh, take advantage of it. The, the, this field is very, very large, and there are many kind of attacks, side channel attacks, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, just after. They have been um, discovered in the late 90s by Paul Kosher, but they were probably uh, already known by the na national agencies before. A very simple uh, side channel attacks is uh, the timing attacks. The, they are very, very basic, but if there is no countermeasure against timing attacks, they, they uh, apply. Back to our uh, pin verification example. As explained before, this code scans the digits presented by the user, one after the other, and the first digit which does not equal to the correct one, it returns false. That means that in this case, the duration of the, 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 of the execution of the pin verification depends on the correctness of the digit presented. So the attacker has only to try 10 different pins varying the first digit, and the longest execution will correspond to the correct digit. Then he will do the same on the second digit and so on. So in worst case, he, he only has to test 40 different pins instead, instead of 10,000. Okay, 40 is more than three, so it, it does not work uh, yet. In order to make it work, the idea is to add a tiering me method. That means that we remove the power supply just after the comparison so that the circuit is not able to update the pin tray counter and then the attacker is able to only try the 40 uh, possible pins and he will, uh, he will be able to know which one is the correct one. Very efficient, if there is no countermeasure, if you don't use secure hardware, it works all the time. Simple power analysis. The, this trace is the power consumption of an RSA execution. RSA, a first, a first implementation of RSA is uh, the square and multiply. At each iteration, the algorithm executes a square and then according to the value of the current bit of the if, the if bit of the exponent, private exponent, it computes a multiply. If it's a one, it computes a multi multiply. If it's a zero, it doesn't. So that means the execution depends on the value of the key. And if it's possible to distinguish on the power, power trace a square for multiply, that means the attacker has only to read the value of the bits of the key directly on the power consumption. I talk about um, square and multiply for RSA, but in the case of ECDSA, this is double and add, and the algorithm is exactly the same. Another kind of side channel attack is our DPA and CPA. The, the, those kind of attacks use the same phenomenon, but in this case, they use statistical difference. The idea the, to, to implement this kind of attack, the attacker targets a single bit of the algorithm, and th this bit must depend on the key. Then he collects a lot of traces, and then he tries to figure out if there is a, a stati statistical difference 
between the, the, the trace for which it's a one from which it's a zero. And if there is a statistical difference, it will be able to retrieve the correct value of the bit of the key. And then it will do the same for, for the different bits in order to retrieve it uh, completely. The CPA attack generalizes this, this ID, but instead of only targeting one bit, it assumes a power consumption model for one byte or for, for a larger value. He collect, the attacker collects a large number of traces, and then he computes the correla um, Pearson correlation coefficient in order to, to know which, uh, which hypothesis of key uh, gives the larger correlation. And we will get uh, this kind of trace for the correct hypothesis of key. Template attacks use, again, the same phenomenon, but instead of assuming a power consumption model, in this case, the attacker observed the power consumption model on the, on the sample on which he, known the key, he knows the key, and then it, he attacks another one. This kind of attack is even more efficient than the CPA, but on, however, it requires the attacker to have a sample with a known key, which is often the case. It depends. Common criteria requires a uh, high level of security against those kind of attacks. To be certified, the secure element must resist to, to those attacks, even with a large number of traces. And if you don't use secure hardware, it's impossible to um, prevent those kind of attacks. And there are plenty of examples of non-secure hardware which have been broken using this technique. To finish with side channel attacks, uh, just a word of, on machine learning uh, techniques. Um, side channel attacks aims at solving a classification problem and machine learning as well. So instead of classifying images as human, animal, airplane categories, the idea is to classify power traces in value of, of key bytes categories. And so we can take advantage of all the research done in the AI field in order to um, improve the efficientness of side channel attacks. The, the good networks of the CNN, convolutional neural networks, are very good to, to attack the, to, for side channel attacks. Just a quick word on uh, physical attacks. Here is the FIB. Uh, this machine is used for defect anal analysis during the IC manufacturing, but this machine can also be uh, used to mount an attack. With this machine, we can uh, edit very locally a circuit and then probe interesting signals. So that means the attacker will be able to uh, probe the, signal, the, the signals connected to the register of key or maybe of the pin registers and so on. So this is very efficient, but this machine is very costly. It costs more than $1 million, and it requires also um, uh, the attacker to have uh, a good expertise. But on the field attacks, using this machine exist. Also, it's possible to use a scanning electron microscope in order to reverse engineer the circuit and then to counterfeit circuit. One might think, this kind of attack does not exist on the field, but it's, it's totally wrong. There are many examples that shows um, uh, ink cartridge. On ink cartridge, there is a, secure, there is a circuit which um, computes a mutual authentication with the printer in order to, uh, to, to prove that the, the ink cartridge is genuine. But the attacker are able to counterfeit the, this circuit using the scanning electron microscope um, uh, technique in order to counterfeit the circuit, and then you are able to, uh, to buy uh, compatible uh, in cartridge which are not genuine. Just as a conclusion, the PUAC has become an industry. Set-top box, in cartridge uh, are such examples which are uh, completely broken. Passports and banking are also attacked. When the stakes are high, the attacker potential are, are also high. In cryptocurrency, the stakes are high and will grow, for sure. 
platforms are already massively attacked. At, at Ledger, we think the security is the main concern. That's why we use uh, the top level security, which are hardware security based on secure element. That's it. Uh, just a word to uh, talk about our bounty program. Um, we organize a capture the flag, which, uh, which start on the 20th. Uh, there are nano OS to, to win, and uh, also there are hardware bounty, and you, you can win uh, more than one Bitcoin uh, backing it. Thank you for your attention. is uh, impure, immune to all the attacks you listed here, right? Yes, we use a secure element which has been uh, evaluated by, by a third party laboratory and certified by a certification scheme. And this, this secure element is immune to those attacks. Okay, so if you, are, if you have to pick one of the attack methods, which one do you think is highest the probability to actually you know, get past, past, past like a like it past the, the gate of the... The, no, no. the highest level of, of attacks are the, the latest, latest uh, category, the physical attacks. But as I explained, they require a lot of time, a right. lot of expertise, and very costly machine. Got it. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, there was a terrorism case in California, and the FBI claimed they couldn't get into the person's phone. Do you believe that claim? Oh, you didn't understand. Sorry. There was a terrorism claim uh, case in California, and I believe the U.S. FBI said they couldn't get into the person's phone. Do you believe that claim? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't really. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. But I don't know. <laughs> Any other question? Thank you. Uh, last one. Do you think you're going to provide an enterprise solution for a hard, hard, like a cold wallet? Yes, or sure. Uh, we, are, we are working on a, on a new generation solution, which is called Vault. Uh, technically, it's based on the HSM, and it allows to, uh, to store your, your assets for the financial world. And um, you, you, you can have a look on our website. It's... Um, there are more, more details there. Okay. Thank you.